All right, folks, I want to call the meeting to order. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is a uh, officially scheduled Greer City Council meeting called and convened this evening, February 23rd, 2016. Having called the meeting to order, I would like to ask you, if you would, to please stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation pronounced by Mr. J. Arrowwood. May we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are always with us. I thank you, Lord, that you have assembled this council to do your work for this city. I pray, Lord, that as, as we conduct the business of the city, that we will always remember and have the heart of a servant. First of all, serving you and then serving the people of this city. I thank you for everyone who dedicates their life to others. And I thank you for this one that will be celebrating his retirement tonight and all the years of service that he has put in. Go with us through this meeting and through the rest of this night. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Ms. Duncan, do we have anybody to appear in public forum this evening? No, sir. With that, then, we'll move to the minutes of the council meeting from February the 9th, 2016. <coughs> do I hear a motion that they be received? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any items of note for the clerk this evening? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Well, we do indeed want to recognize one of our own this evening. I'd like to ask Vernon Jameson if he will join the administrator and I at the front of the um, chamber, please. That's a <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we pause to take time to uh, recognize those employees when they reach a milestone in their service to the city, and we do that on a regular basis. And for the past number of years, we have uh, recognized Vernon Jameson as his uh, number of years of service to the city have grown. And so tonight, uh, we will recognize years, but we also want to recognize those in terms of his retirement. And so this evening, we want to present a certificate of appreciation uh, it reads, congratulations upon your retirement from the city of Greer presented in appreciation of 25 years of dedicated service to the city of Greer. June 25th, 1989, to March 27, 2002, and then August 28, 2003, to January 6, 2016. This is for Jim Wilson. Uh, this day, 23rd February, 2016. Join, join me in getting burned our way up. to you for you to use in your home as a, re a remembrance of your time here at the city. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Thanks. You want to say anything? Well, I was going to say I miss everybody. But I'm getting used to sleeping at home every night. Thank you. I want everybody to know that when 
he retires with the number of years that he has put on that we are losing a very valuable asset with a lot of institutional knowledge about the fire department as well as the city. So I just want to again thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Council, in your uh, packet this evening as departmental reports, you will find uh, activity reports for the month of January. Those reports, uh, of course, are listed uh, and contained in your packet for review. Uh, administrator or department head will be glad to give you any additional information that you need to those reports. And Mr. David Seifert, uh, <coughs> city's controller, joins us this evening to give us a financial update. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight we bring to you the budget report for the period ended January 31st, 2016. Beginning with the revenue for the general fund, we have $10,666,064 recorded with $10,674,028 recorded as expenditures. That amount on the expenditure side carries us 7% under budget through the period January 31st. Referencing the dashboards, we have an overall combined positive variance of $1,000,000 $265,165 and a carrying cash balance of $7,643,952. Moving to the hospitality fund, we have revenue recorded that is 7% over budget of $1,113,177 with expenditures to date of $678,099 with a carrying cash balance of $1,000,000 $110,798. And finally, for the stormwater fund, we have revenue recorded of $387,204 with $254,633 of expenditures and a carrying cash balance of $1,055,987. We're happy to take any questions that you may have at this time, please. Council, floor is open. Seifert, we appreciate the report, and uh, thank you for uh, your work in that regard, sir. Thank you. Well, typically, when we have a uh, petitioner on the agenda, they are uh, coming to ask something of us, but this evening is a little bit different because our petitioner has uh, come to uh, make a presentation to us, and uh, this evening we are joined by... Uh, Mr. Buddy Morgan and his wife, and uh, we are uh, proud to have them with us this evening. Mr. Morgan is a member of the uh, Masonic Lodge here in Greer that uh, is the, uh, um, the lodge that's located there on Highway 29, and I uh, recently had an opportunity to join them uh, for a celebration, and I'm going to get him to help me remember how many years it uh, was, but uh, it's uh, actually, I think, more than the city of Greer, which gives you some indication of uh, how strong that group is and how their uh, mission is, uh, has been present in our community for a long time. And as part of the work that they do in the community, they have a new program that uh, uh, Masons and Masonic Lodges are doing, and uh, Mr. Morgan wants to uh, give us some information in regards to that and to present us with a portrait uh, that I think you will uh, instantly recognize. So, Mr. Morgan, if you would, join me here at the front of the uh, chambers, and uh, I'll give you some time to talk about... Um Okay. <laughs> but they, they was a, or, uh, 
sell these portraits, and uh, I was told that part of the funds go to kids who have diabetes. And uh, a few of us just bought one, and we just want to donate it or give to whoever. And I said I'd get one and give it to City Grid. And I think it's a great picture and everything, but I just uh, something I want to do. Well, we now have the uh, father of our country and the first mayor of Greer in the hallway <laughs> down there, so we're off to a pretty good start. <laughs> so, um, we want to thank the mortars for this portrait. Uh, as, as he's indicated, part of it uh, goes to research, and uh, it uh, is, I believe, the goal, if, you're, if I'm not mistaken, of the lodge that they had one in every elementary school. Uh, in the town that they represent? Was that what I heard that night? I or, think so. I believe so. So uh, hopefully we'll get to see some of these in elementary schools as, uh, as well as City Hall, but I can't think of a more appropriate place to have one than uh, in City Hall, and uh, we want to thank you and uh, any of the others that were involved in that. Thank you, sir, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I want to set this right here and uh, I will assure you we'll find a place of honor that's uh, worthy of that portrait. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Appreciate it. With that, we'll move to the administrator's report. Mr. Driggers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Only a couple of calendar items and a few comments. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, our community will be hosting uh, the Upstate International uh, Festival Gala this weekend here in the city of Greer. That will be taking place on Friday evening. Uh, we're also uh, partnering and celebrating with our local Chamber of Commerce uh, at one of their networking events here in our community as well. Uh, several of you will be attending uh, at least one of those items since it's the same evening i don't think we have anyone trying to do both of those uh, as a calendar reminder do want to uh, share with you that we are uh, quickly filling our agenda for our council retreat um, it is the week of your council meeting on march the 8th so we will actually uh, conduct some of our retreat on that evening uh, and then we will be uh, involved all day on that wednesday uh, march the 9th uh, and we will be involved for at least three-fourths of the day uh, on that Thursday the 10th. Uh, there is a lot of work for us to do, a number of items for us to cover. Uh, we've traditionally done some of our work in executive session as part of that meeting. Uh, since we are meeting on that Tuesday evening, we will do that portion of our work uh, as part of our executive session uh, on that Tuesday evening. So we'll make very good use of your time on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, but I know you all have that marked on your calendars, uh, and uh, the agenda, again, is filling quickly. But we do want to make sure if you have a, uh, an item for discussion that you would like to make sure that we are allocating some time for, please let us know, and we will make sure that that is handled as well. I want to make you aware that um, several members of our team will be traveling to Columbia next week. Uh, we are presenting uh, our entry for the Municipal Association uh, Awards. As you are aware, we, we submit and celebrate every year uh, a, a nomination for that program, and a number of times uh, we've walked away uh, as, the, um, as the recipient of the state trophy. Uh, we had five projects uh, that we uh, internally considered this year. Did this a little bit different. i uh, shared with you a couple of you uh, how that kind of worked a little bit. But I was asked to provide a little additional information. What we asked of each of our departments uh, was to look at their programming uh, within their departments. And we looked at the programming citywide uh, for projects that, uh, that we really believed exemplified the requirements of the Achievement Awards. Uh, primarily those are uh, being innovative. Uh, it is the ability for those programs to be uh, duplicated in other communities across the state. Uh, and we have to be able to demonstrate the effectiveness of the program as well. 
Uh, this year, uh, we had submitted to us um, our structuring alliance meeting, and that was the, the gathering that we did with our planning commission and the, uh, the, the work that we did there. Our youth uh, police academy, our moonlight movies, um, our coloring book, our city coloring book, and also the implementation of our CDV, our C criminal domestic violence court. Um, we had a panel of judges that used a matrix to evaluate each of the projects. Um, and so each of those projects were scored and we're very happy to report that we will be presenting <coughs> next week the CDV court project uh, as our entry for the State Municipal Achievement Awards. Uh, we're very, very um, confident that it is an excellent entry, um, but as you well know by attending that meeting each year, uh, the competition is fierce. Uh, and there's an awful lot of folks that, uh, that vie for that recognition and that trophy. So uh, we were glad to be able to present our <coughs> first trophy to our uh, courts department. Our municipal courts department uh, will receive our traveling trophy. Uh, and then next year, that trophy will be passed along to the department uh, for next year's entry. Uh, and so we've kind of started our own uh, internal competition and then we'll take that entry and move it on to the state level. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. The other is our budget schedule uh, has been finalized. Uh, we've been working with our departments already on our budget schedule. Uh, just uh, as we will work through that process over the next several months, uh, we will have some opportunities for uh, council workshops and sessions involving the budget as well. But we are scheduling or we are recommending uh, that we would do first reading of the budget on May 24th. We would conduct our public hearing. Uh, we would start our public hearing uh, advertising on May the 25th, uh, enabling us to hold our public hearing uh, and our uh, scheduled uh, second reading on June the 14th. Uh, we will have one additional meeting following that, so if we were to have any issues um, that we need to uh, gather any additional information, we'll have an additional two weeks to do that, uh, but, but our attempt will be to try to finish the budget by that June 14th date, uh, so we'll start working toward that. As part of your retreat in a couple of weeks, we will also be spending some time reviewing uh, our preparations for the budget process and reviewing our financial position as part of that meeting as well. Those are the items that I needed to uh, advise council of. I would like to ask uh, your consideration for one item in executive session this evening. Uh, I do need to talk with council briefly about a personnel matter involving our police department. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> now that I've put a piece of candy in my mouth, we'll <laughs> proceed with old business. <laughs> The first item of which is the second and final reading of ordinance number 4-2016. This is an ordinance to provide for the annexation of properties owned by column GSP 08 LP located at 1010 and 1014 Robinson Road by 100% petition and to establish a zoning classification of I-1 for said property. Uh, comes as old business, um, second reading. Um, I will assume not seeing Mr. Pace that there's no change um, to the ordinance or to the outline of the ordinance, I'll entertain a motion to receive. I move. Second. A motion and second. Floor is open for discussion. Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? <coughs> yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Banner? Yes. Council on items of new business, we have a couple of resolutions to consider. Uh, in regards to um, our annual safety statement as well as the blood-borne pathogen resolution. These come before us on an annual basis. The chief joins us in that regard. The first item is the first and final reading of resolution number 2-2016. This is a resolution adopting the City of Greer annual safety statement. Chief, anything to add to that? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of council. There's, there's no recommended changes this year as opposed to previous years. No changes to the statement, the annual safety statement. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. <coughs> Floor is open for discussion. Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aaron Wood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Mayor Danner? Yes. 
Second item is the first and final reading of resolution number 3-2016. This is a resolution to update the City of Greer Bloodborne Pathogen Standard to comply with Occupational Safety and Health Administration requirements. Chief? Again, there were no, uh, no changes this year. Upon the recommendation of the um, staff, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we may have to stop them all, go outside and cough. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Item C is the disposal of surplus property. Engine 4, which is a 1991 pumper, has extensive maintenance. It's maintenance maintenance issues uh, and uh, the chief has requested time to make a presentation to council in regard to the disposal of said property chief mayor members of council um, normally disposal of equipment we would go through the normal process of of listing it for uh, surplus on gov deals but uh, this time around we've actually had two requests for this particular piece of apparatus um, as it states it's in 1991 so it's 25 years old um, the last time that we actually had a pump test done on it, it did not pass its full capacity pump test. Um, it would require probably some significant amount of money to make those repairs to get it back to where it would pass that. Again, it's one of those things I can't really recommend that we've dumped a lot of money into it, um, being of its age. Um, but we've had a couple requests, and one of the requests is for the Harley Bond Center, which some of you may be aware that they've started up a uh, firefighter training program there at the Harley Bond Center and actually uh, Chief Harvey um, is, is over that program there and teaches there. So we've had a request for the truck there. Um, again, that would be a situation where it wouldn't be uh, used for frontline emergency uh, response or anything like that. It's more or less for training. So that's one, one request we've had. And the other request um, is a little unique. Um, the Woodruff Fire Department has actually made a request for the truck. Um, and the reason for that request is they have a truck that's actually a little bit newer, um, but it has a canopy top, so it doesn't have a hard top on the crew cab area. Um, they don't need it for the pump capacity, which is why they could make use of it, um, and they're willing to make use of it for it, um, where, where we wouldn't, where I couldn't make that recommendation to you. Um, so they've asked that we consider to let them uh, either receive the, the truck or purchase it. I don't have a, um, an offer as far as the price goes, but they've offered to purchase the truck and also um, in addition to doing so, they've offered to surplus their truck, the, canop the one with the, uh, the canopy, soft canopy, uh, to the uh, Harley Bond Center so that they would still have a truck that they could use. The reason that, that uh, the chief at Woodruff has made that request is he still needs to be able to get personnel from his station to an incident and it provides a safer riding position for his firefighters because it has that hard top on it um, and it's a fully enclosed cab. So those two requests came in whenever they found out that we were looking at possibly surplusing the equipment. Again, um, normally our normal action would have been put on gov deals, but I wanted to bring that to you and present that to you as options um, and at this point I like some direction or obviously questions. Council? So if, if, if we were to give our truck to Woodruff, mm -hmm. he would take his good pump off of it and put it on that truck? Is that? No, sir. He, he's, not, he's not interested in a truck um, for pumping capacity. That's why the fact that it doesn't pass the pump test is not a, not a concern for him. He's looking at it for a safety standpoint for his staff. He needs, he needs the cab space for his staff. Right. So the truck that he has would, would transfer to the Harley Bond Center as as is. It would just be as is. pump off of it or anything like that. And again, it's it's been it's been a few weeks since I spoke to him on that. So if if that ends up being the direction of council, I would have to go back to him and make sure that he's still interested in doing that. Also determine what um, if anything uh, they're willing to offer for the truck if that's what council desires. Um, and, and, and this truck is simply surplus to our fleet at this point? 
it is. It's not necessary for our ISO rating. Um, it's not to say that you know down the road we might not have to look at you know another truck, but not to replace this truck. That would be if we um, changed you know something about how we're providing fire protection. So if we added another fire station and we didn't have a fire engine to put there, but right now that's not an issue. We we've got the pumping capacity that's required by ISO. ISO and honestly, if we got to the point where we were going to use this truck, we would not use it. We would call our partners um, that surround us and have them come in and help us and or uh, borrow one of their trucks. Well, they're, 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 they're both certainly sound like, you know, valid requests. Uh, it, it's appealing and intriguing to me that we would have the ability to help the city of Woodruff and also the Harley Bond Center if if they would be willing to gift their truck to um, Harley Bond Center. I, I would have no issue in, in giving them our truck if there's if, if there's not a significant value to it on the condition that they gift theirs to the to the Harley Bond Center. I, Sounds like a win-win to me. But the Bond Center can achieve the same result with Woodruff's truck as they could with that. That is my understanding. Basically, what they need is they need a truck that they can have on on site um, because part of our agreement that we have with the Harley Bond Center and trying to support that program is that when they have a need for training for a truck for training, we're actually bringing one of our trucks down there. In 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 some cases, either leaving a person with that truck or leaving the truck there for them to train with and coming back and picking it up and bringing it back. So this would also eliminate that. It wouldn't <coughs> completely eliminate it, but it would reduce that request um, with them having a truck on site. I think it sounds like a win-win you know, for both Woodruff and the Harley Bond Center. The only question I have, Mr. Driggers, um, since this, what was this truck planned to be uh, liquidated this year and if so was that money budgeted in revenues no. perhaps and no okay uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> right it doesn't affect the bottom line okay sir. the truck is completely depreciated on its value for us right. now that doesn't mean that the truck doesn't have value right. Right. if we put it on gov deals it somebody would offer something for it um, but we also saw that this may be an opportunity um, to, uh, to be a good neighbor uh, and, um, and provide training uh, in, a, in any number of ways. Uh, if, we, if we had chosen to go with Gov deals, we, we would not have brought this issue to you. It simply would have gone as surplus. Uh, but this option uh, we, we just felt was uh, unusual and we needed a little direction uh, on how you wanted us to proceed. Of course, we didn't anticipate this was going to make a be a big money maker for us. If we, right. I mean, I saw a truck that was almost identical to this that sold three years ago. It was like five grand. Yeah. So it's it's not a huge money maker for it, us. It, it really isn't. Um, you know, in, in some places, you know, and and there, there's small departments that you know can't hardly even keep their doors open. That you know might would find a truck like this as their only option. Um, you know, and when I say it won't pass pump capacity, it doesn't mean it won't pump water. It just means it won't pump the rated capacity that the truck was certified to pump at. So if it's rated at, you know, 1,000 gallons a minute, um, it might, you know, pump 500 gallons a minute. It might pump 700, but it will not pump the rated capacity. So even if we were, you know, relying on it for ISO uh, requirements, we would not get full credit for that apparatus. But again, we're not relying on that apparatus and it's pump capacity for our ISO rating. If we can help another municipality, and you know, I, I wouldn't want to give them something that didn't have some value, so I, I think it'd be appropriate if, uh, if council agrees that uh, we would, um, on the condition that they would be willing to, uh, to give their pumper to uh, the Harley Bond Center, that we'd be willing to uh, give, them a, give them a pumper. You need a motion? I do. Um, I'll make that motion. And I'll so second have a motion and a second. Unanimously seconded. So we will, um, any, any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes.
and, and of course what that gives us the opportunity is we'll confirm all of that and that it works in that fashion if there are any issues with that whatsoever we'll bring that back to you thank you thank you thank you Council contained in your packet this evening is a bid summary. This is in regards to the Tryon Center roofing project. Um, we've got uh, Ms. Cunningham with us, and uh, Mr. Seifert is uh, here to present some information as well, too. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. If I may uh, have your permission and indulgence, I'd like to address items D and E together from the budgetary standpoint. We have two bid summaries that we're bringing to you tonight. Uh, one is the re-roofing project at the Tryon Center. The second one is some renovations to the PD Police Department and Courts Building, putting in some <coughs> bulletproof walls and, and glass in certain areas. When we worked on the budget last year, we budgeted $169,000 to transfer to the Real Property Fund to cover these two projects. When you look at these projects individually, where we budgeted those dollars within the departments, one is uh, one proposal has come in over budget, one proposal has come in under budget. So we want to present the budget information to you that between the two projects uh, that we have transferred and set aside that money it, that is ready to go for these projects, we are under budget on both projects together. So we just want to get that you know, in front of you, you're fully aware that we intend and, and propose to you to use the excess from one project to transfer to the second project to cover the um, excess costs coming in over budget. So first with item D, we have the bid summary. This is for the roofing project at uh, Tryon Center. We had one bid come in in the amount of $29,276. And Ms. Cunningham will uh, present uh, some additional information. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, ProGuard roof coating was identified and spec'd as the most effective product for re-roofing of the Tryon Recreation Center. And IES Coatings, LLC, was the only bidder for the repair and renovation of the roof using this unique product. And just a brief description of what's involved in this process is that after preparations for the application of the product have been completed, a roof spray, uh, grade liquid rubber sealant, is applied and then any cracks or seams in the membrane or metal will be sealed with a three-ply fabric reef enforced system. A silicone is then applied um, to the entire roof section to provide a monolithic membrane. Uh, ProGuard will issue a 10-year manufacturer uh, labor and material leak-free warranty after the job has been completed. I was provided three references for IES Coatings, LLC, and after speaking with each one and receiving great recommendations from <coughs> vendors, completing projects for organizations such as Michelin and Greenville County, I feel confident that this product and this company are the best choice for the roof repair at the Tryon Recreation Center. Uh, our budget to complete this project was $40,000 and uh, with their bid of $29,276. It leaves us a surplus of $10,724. On the recommendation of staff, do I hear a motion to receive? So move. Second. Motion and a second. Floor is open for discussion or questions. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Okay. Didn't know if you wanted to read item E or not. Oh, item E. <laughs> Biz Summary Police Department in Court, Bulletproof Walls. Okay. Mr. Seifert. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. The <coughs> second project is the Police uh, Department in Courts Building. We have two bidders for that project. One was laser construction in the amount of 166900 The apparent low bidder is Sealy Construction for 135000 $754. In that department, or between the two departments, court and PD, we have um, $129,000 budgeted with a proposal of $135,754, leaving a shortage of the $6,754 that we previously mentioned. 
and then we will transfer the excess from the recreation, that $10,000, to cover the shortage. And Chief Reynolds will be bringing some additional information on that project. Chief? Mayor, Council, in the last couple of years there's been a lot of issues in surrounding police departments, courts, and the attacks on both police outside the department, both in departments, uh, and heavily inside the courtrooms. So I've met myself and Kirsten Presley uh, to discuss what we can do to improve the security for the, uh, the offices there, the entranceways to our departments. We both agreed that we need to bulletproof the offices, the fronts of the offices. Uh, they'll do our court plus Magnuson's court uh, to a level, level 7 bulletproofing, which will handle a 5.56 round, which is an M16, if you're not familiar with that, or a CAR-15. Uh, we feel that's adequate, uh, adequate bulletproofing to, to handle the situation. Uh, that includes a steel door, uh, access to our, our office, our front office, as well as uh, drywall, which I wasn't familiar with at first, but also is a level seven that they can uh, put in inside the office as well as the magistrate in the, the, uh, our municipal court's office. Uh, it means they'll put bulletproof window also in all the, the courts and the police uh, to provide that same security. So basically that's what both, both uh, departments have asked for and, and that's what was part of the bid. And again, that was a low bid that came in and it was just a little bit higher than, than what we had budgeted. That, that's uh, the windows and the bulletproofing, that's mainly on the first floor? It's all on surrounding the Surrounding the court? Right. Okay. Well, to the average person, what will be the visible difference from the way it is now? I don't think, I've, I've seen bulletproofing before on occasion in other departments, and you really can't tell it at first. Now, if you got close enough, you could see the thickness of the glass when you get to the, uh, the counter. But we're not but, materially changing all that much about the, that floor itself, right? Other than the... The design will not change right. at no, no. all. Yeah. It, it you will replace the existing you. glass with bulletproof glass, and then the drywall work will simply be removed and replaced. Right. And it would be behind the counter, so you wouldn't even know it was there. Same with the steel proofing on the door. Chief, what's the, um, the, the, the bulletproof walls? Is that to keep from keep penetration going through one wall into another office? Is that? Uh, they keep it from going into the office itself. Somebody outside the shooting. From the lobby into, into the, the office. shooting into yeah. the office. Okay. All I'm right. more concerned about the, the court because it's right there off the intersection. Uh, I, I know when Mr. Uh, Drigerson and I were looking at our department, people have a hard time finding the front door, and he would like us to have more signage so people know where to go, and I prefer not to because I'd rather <laughs> go to the court. Anonymity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Council, you've heard the recommendation of the uh, chief of the staff in this regard. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So motion. The, the low bid, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Recommendations for the low bid. Second. I have a motion and second in that regard. Any further uh, comments, questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Yeah. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we have one item for executive session this evening, a personnel matter. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So move. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Bookert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council on Executive Session, we've considered one personnel matter in regard to the police department. We've taken no action in that regard. Do I hear a motion to come out of Executive Session? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Yes. 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 Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we stand adjourned.